Welcome to today's Creative Cave. For the next eight minutes or more, I will be your host, Dave Thornton. And this is my movie review of the blockbuster hit Platoon from 1986. Also, stay tuned for some bonus material I will be presenting at the end of this review. This was such a great movie. All the realistic firefight, death scenes, all the blood explosions. Ugh, what a man's movie. I believe this was because the movie's writer and director, Oliver Stone, served in Nam. Stone joined the army in April of 67 and is said to have requested combat duty. He served over in the jungles of Vietnam from September of 67 until November of 68. I'll tell you, being a fellow infantryman myself with multiple combat deployments, I can say those boys went through hells even I cannot imagine. My hat is off to those men. Stone first served with the 25th Infantry Division, Tropic Lightning, not to be mistaken for the blundering spoof Tropic Thunder. He then went on to serve the rest of his tour with the 1st Cavalry Division. He was wounded twice during his 15 month tour, which by the way is a long time in the bush, but wasn't uncommon, which explains why some of our Vietnam vets were so messed up after redeploying home, which is a discussion for another day. He received two awards, a bronze star with a V device. It's a letter V that gets attached to the ribbon to signify heroism or valor and it has to be a significant action because not everyone gets them. It is the fourth highest ranking award a service member can receive for a heroic and meritorious deed performed in an armed conflict and it signals their sacrifice, bravery, and honor while serving their country. Stone was also awarded the Purple Heart with oak leaf cluster signifying different times of being wounded in Vietnam. This movie has a cast where a large amount of them turn into heavy hitters later in their career. Even still, they gave amazing performances during their formative years in this smash hit. This list of heavy hitters include Charlie Sheen, who plays the role of Chris, a private just deploying to Vietnam, William Defoe as the caring and compassionate Sergeant Elias, Tom Berenger as the sadistic Staff Sergeant Barnes, Boris Whitaker as Big Harold, Keith David as King, Johnny Depp as Lerner, and Kevin Dillon as Bunny. Oliver Stone actually had a cameo part in this movie as Alpha Company's commander down in the bunker when they were getting overrun. Here's some little known tidbits about the film. Two of the lead roles were deliberately cast against their type. Tom Berenger, who was usually known for playing the good guy, played the bad staff sergeant, while William Defoe was known for the bad guy roles, was cast as a sergeant with the moral compass. The scene in which Chris saves a Vietnamese girl from being raped is based on something Oliver Stone really did experience during his tour in Vietnam. Some of the actors chose to write messages on the helmets they wore throughout the film. For his, Charlie Sheen wrote, when I die, bury me upside down so the world can kiss my ass, which fits the gung-ho spirit of his character as well as his own personality. Johnny Depp's message was a little simpler with Sherilyn referring to his then girlfriend, Sherilyn Fenn. The famous poster depicting Sergeant Elias on his knees with his arms stretched out in the air has gone down in history as one of the most powerful and famous movie images ever. It's actually based on a real picture taken by a war photographer, Art Greenspoon, in 1968. Oliver Stone made it a point to exhaust the cast. Prior to filming, the cast was subjected to a grueling two weeks of intensive training. This wasn't to get them to bond or physically fit for the movie, but to deprive them of sleep and make them so exhausted that they genuinely struggled to endure the shoot very much in character, as it's difficult to be wide awake and fully functional while pretending not to be. This movie was based on Stone's own experiences as a kid discovering under fire that the reality of war did not match the publicity campaign. In a way, I feel this is Stone's way of expressing himself and releasing the trauma he had experienced. Stone was able to capture the true horror and raw emotion of conflict. 
with scenes that are both tragic and traumatic. This is a film that is hard to watch, yet makes you unable to turn away. Platoon won Oscars for Best Picture and Best Director, while bringing in over $138 million while tethered to a $6 million budget. Upon its release, the cast was worried that the film would be overshadowed by other military movies, such as the blockbuster hit Top Gun, and just be viewed as another war movie. We see that wasn't the case at all. The story is narrated by Charlie Sheen, just as his father, Martin Sheen, did with the narration of Apocalypse Now from 1979. Another great film, by the way. So the story goes, a young man, Chris Taylor, or could be Oliver Stone, quits college to be all he can be and go do his part for the war effort in Vietnam. Once he is there, experiences the realities of where he is at and the shit he's in, his idealism quickly fades, as does his innocence. We see him quickly change from this naive new recruit to a battle-hardened soldier by the end of the movie. Meanwhile, Staff Sergeant Barn, who appears to be an insane, war-hardened maniac, has an internal moral dilemma with the platoon after committing war crimes in a Vietnamese village. Half the platoon is on his side, while the other half is on Sergeant Elias' side, who ends up reporting Barnes for unlawful killings of civilians. Being short on manpower, the platoon cannot afford to lose a squad leader at the moment, so the commander states that if he finds any evidence of unlawful murder of civilians, he will have them all court-martialed, which is pretty much being brought up on criminal charges and facing a military panel of judges. The next day, during an ambush, after all the fighting had ceased, Staff Sergeant Barnes and Sergeant Elias run into each other, alone, by themselves, in the jungle, which does not end well for Sergeant Elias at all. The next day or night, after another long battle with the Viet Cong, Taylor ends up killing Staff Sergeant Barnes, thus getting revenge for the killing of Sergeant Elias. Now, something I didn't pick up on the first time I watched this is after Chris shoots Barnes, he's sitting there while holding a grenade, fiddling with the pin. Chris drops it as reinforcements arrive on the scene. This part of the movie was not in the script, but Charlie Sheen added it saying that after having just killed his staff sergeant, the, his character would be a little suicidal. Oliver liked it, agreed, and kept it in the scene. So having been wounded twice, Taylor was reminded that he now gets to go home. While flying out on the helicopter, Taylor looks down and starts crying at the, all the destruction while narrating from the future that he will forever remain in Vietnam with Barnes and Elias battling for possession of his soul, believing that he as well as other veterans must rebuild themselves and find goodness and purpose in their lives. That is so deep, and if you have never been in combat, you cannot fully understand and appreciate that statement right there. There is a unwritten brotherhood a bond that civilians will never understand among us combat vets. Obviously, I like this movie, even from before I joined the Army in 97, I enjoyed this movie. At times, there are moments of comedy only us vets can pick up on. The realistic, dramatic events, all scripted out, almost puts you right there in the action, as Chris Taylor himself. Oliver Stone did such an amazing job using his life experience bringing all the characters to life, having the audience react and feel for each one. Even though I had a lot of fun making this video, this was a very emotional assignment for me because of what I've been through myself and being privileged to know what I know about what went on in the Vietnam War over there. Some made it back and were never the same again, while some never made it back. So if we could please, a moment of silence for the ones who paid the ultimate sacrifice, allowing us to be who we are and where we are today. In 2017, I had the opportunity to visit Vietnam. I was stationed in Seoul, Korea with the 2nd Infantry Division. Um, on my spare time, I was part of the international billiards team that represented Seoul. So every year we would travel to an Asian country whoever was hosting the tournament at the time. Uh, so while in Vietnam, I went and visited the museum there in Ho Chi Minh City, which used to be Saigon. Here are some pictures I can share with you. So 
These first set of images are of the tunnel systems. These were of great importance to the Viet Cong in the resistance of the American forces. As you can see how small these holes are. Here, I am literally shoving my fat ass down this rabbit hole. A very tight squeeze. Way down there, obviously the stairs were installed when this became part of the museum. But down there is a tiny, tiny hole. There were thousands of these holes all over, which connected to a series of other tunnels, which made up many underground villages or cities, if you will. And looks kind of like an ant farm. Our soldiers would have to venture into these holes pretty much blind. There were no lights in these, and flashlights were pretty much non-existent. It rained all the time, and the holes would fill up with water and other dangerous critters such as the King Cobra. The Viet Cong would take unexploded ordnance and make homemade weapons. So besides the ambushes, the raids, and nature trying to kill them, our soldiers had to watch out for traps. Not only would the traps get you, but they would also throw snakes and other critters in the traps, or they would poison the barbs and spikes. We are all aware of the effects Agent Orange had on both sides as the U.S. dusted not only the enemies, but our own troops as well. And if they didn't get dusted, just coming into an area contaminated with this stuff was still enough to mess them up. And still to this day, the people of Vietnam have to deal with the aftermath of this lethal chemical. This concludes my review. Thank you for watching and listening.